Hey, welcome back. Today we're gonna talk a little bit about the Path to Passion class, parts about oxytocin and how it helps you bond and feel connected. We're gonna talk about men and some of their challenges in the bedroom because so often we focus on the women and their challenges, right? But everybody has challenges. How do we navigate that in a beautiful, connected, and loving way? First, here's the show reel. So in these courses, we will explore how to make all of this more accessible for you, how to understand yourself more deeply as you release the emotional contributing factors that are challenging your connection in your relationship. Because a healthy sex life can bring out about greater intimacy in a relationship, but remember, it's not always about sex, even though that's the focus of this class, right? But the physical act does create surges in the hormone oxytocin. And if you know about oxytocin, half my book's about it, but it's really called the cuddling hormone. Increased levels of oxytocin uh, result in better trust, better bonding, better connection. It reduces stress. It increases desire. It sends messages to our brain to secrete neurotransmitters that make us feel good about ourselves and our partner. One question you can ask yourself is, if I could be fully sexual again, what might the repercussions be? In other words, what badness might come out of it? because this is gonna give you a clue as to what's underlying and what's in the way of, what's the wall to your desire coming back. So for example, I've had male clients who were traumatized by past relationships or whose former wives or former partners had cut them off from sex completely. And they were so used to feeling shame, to not wanting to uh, be in, have infidelity, to like locking themselves down, that when they got into their new relationships, they had challenges until they actually were able to heal themselves, right? All of these things contribute to sexless marriages, to shame, to guilt, right? So when we're talking about sexual arousal, we often think about it as men, like I just mentioned with Viagra, right? But it happens in women as well. In fact, 10 to 20% of men and women, strongly age-related in men, but not always. Because remember, sexual arousal is a is a physiological process, but also it's influenced by our mind, by psychological, by emotional factors. A lot of the men who struggle with this, it actually gets led back to a childhood experience or a younger experience where they got caught masturbating. And it was traumatic or is embarrassing for them. And their subconscious mind then when they're with their partner is like, let's hurry up and get this over so we don't get caught. And it's actually an emotional push to keep oneself safe from being re-traumatized or being embarrassed again. So drugs like Viagra, drugs like Cialis, a lot of men who have erectile dysfunction are looking for any way that they can to overcome an arousal disorder. These stats are really on the rise, right? Some it's the pressure that we're putting on men to perform. Some of it's the pornography and the way that we're portraying each other in films, in expectations, how we expect each other to show up in the bedroom. Often it's also emotional. Of course, there are a percentage of cases that are physiological, right? That do require medical intervention. But I know a lot of men who've had temporary problems with partners, without partners, doesn't matter just because they're stressed out, because they're thinking about other things, because their body is just trying to show them like, hey, I need a rest, or hey, I need some different food, or hey, I need more water, or hey, you're pushing yourself too hard, whatever it is. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you've learned in the comments below. There's also a link to the online version of Path to Passion class. Remember that you are love, you are loving, and you are lovable. Remember to subscribe and like so you get the rest of the class bits, and I will see you very soon.